guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. Uh, it's another hot one outside today. It was supposed to be 108. I think it's currently 102 and the 10 day looks just about the same. I don't think we're gonna reach 108, but it's right around 100, 102, 106. I can't wait for fall at this point. I know that a lot of you are gonna cringe at me even saying that. I am such a fair weather heat person. I like it between 50 and 70. <sighs> That's my jam. I do like the fact that the heat brings on tons of growth. That's awesome. I mean, so there's like- Stuff grows fast yeah, when it's that hot. Yeah, If you give it enough water. Yeah, there's good and bad definitely. But I am looking forward to being like having comfortable temperatures mm -hmm. and being able to have the kids back outside because we don't we don't have them outside for very long when it's 108 degrees outside. So I wait until like Samantha came out with me. She loves being outside. Mm -hmm. That's the one way if she's fussy and she's cutting a tooth right now. So when she's fussy, like last night, I'm, I thought, you know what, I can't, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> I got to get her outside. The second I pop her out on the sidewalk in her stroller, it's like quiet. Mm -hmm. And she's looking at the leaves and she's like my girl. Loves being she outside. She loves being outside. So I can't wait for it to cool down for that reason too. Anyway, in that vein, we might, depending on how things go, we might skip a day or two if like video projects are hard to do. Cause really right now, uh, we don't want to do a whole lot of planting. There's a lot of maintenance to do, which um, we'll talk about the maintenance video we did later on in this video, which was like, I really liked that. Um, but yeah, so depending on how it goes, we might just skip a day or two, kind of like in the middle of winter mm -hmm. when it just gets really hard. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into the first video from this last week. It was harvesting and giving away cabbage with my mom. So I planted those two long, I think they were 47 foot rows on either side of a walkway out in our cut flower garden, um, which I think I'll probably do every year. I thought it was so pretty and maybe like even do it on every, every edge, like kind of in that cross pattern mm -hmm. that we have out there or the X pattern or whatever it is. Uh, I thought it was so pretty. Anyway, so my mom came over and helped me harvest it harvest it because we just use whatever opportunity we can to make something fun because um, it wouldn't have taken me very long to harvest them by myself but she came over and helped me that um, the evening before we took them down to the garden center and just gave them away uh, but Ellen was his top comment said bless your heart for sharing your harvest the world needs more people like you which is so sweet and I think there are a lot of people who do that I I did read um, in the comments Aaron there was like a, a quote somebody was sharing saying I don't plant I don't give away stuff because I have a big garden. I plant a big garden so I can give away stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And that's so like how I want my garden space to be utilized. Wherever I can give away extra, I'm going to do it. So yes. And I think a lot of people are, I think last year I noticed a huge shift in that. Mm -hmm. I noticed a huge amount of people doing that sort of thing. Ryan said, what kind of cabbage did you plant? That was Copenhagen market. I, is it a 75 day? Uh, let me look. I plant it every year. I really like that cabbage. In fact, last year, maturity day, kind of do thing, two things at once. Uh, 65 to 80 days, I was close, anywhere in there. Last year, I planted the same thing too, and I got some massive heads of cabbage. I posted a picture of one of them, and I have one in our raised bed vegetable garden. I, I didn't harvest those, they're still there, most of them. Uh, that's really sizing up like it's huge. I'm gonna let it keep going and we'll see how big we can get it to grow Marsha said my Walla Walla onion tops have drooped over why could be because they're ready to harvest um, It depends on what your onion bulbs look like how long ago you planted them mine are getting pretty close Usually they stay upright until they're ready. They'll start getting uh, soft like toward the base of the stalk kind of right above the onion bulb they'll get squishy and kind of flop over and you kind of know at that point that they're ready to harvest that's probably the closest thing i don't know if they would droop over because of well lack of water or something like that i mean i suppose that's that's a, a thing too anyway amanda said doesn't the scale have a tear button yes <laughs> So we weighed an empty crate so that we knew how much that weighed. And then we weighed all the, all the cabbage in crates and then deducted the weight when I could have just used the tear button. I didn't even think about it, Erin. Like, <laughs> Not surprised. Yeah, I, d I just didn't. Anything to do with technology, I feel like you always kind of go the long way around. I do. But you've weighed a ton of stuff at, at Andrew's I before. Know. So it's not like you're unaware how it works. <laughs> Uh, into the garden said, are you going to leave the aphid cabbages there for now? What will you do with them? The chickens got them. 
Liz's Urban Roost said, what was up with the sunglasses that kept ending up on the cabbage? My dad thought it would be hilarious to put sunglasses on the cabbage. And then he kept coming out because I kept rearranging the cabbage to make it look full. And he kept coming out and moving the glasses around to different <laughs> cabbages. Wanda said, how do you keep your peppers from burning in the hot temps? Mine get burned in our 100 plus temps when they aren't covered. Yeah, and some of mine do too if they're exposed. I find if they're well watered, um, if they have got any kind of leaf canopy, most of them are okay. I noticed a, a couple of mine are burning as well and I could cover mine and I just don't take the time. I've got so many peppers planted um, that typically it's okay. I, I don't mind sacrificing a few to sun scald. Um, Anyway, if you only have a couple pepper plants though, I mean, you can throw some floating row cover, that really lightweight white material to kind of protect them. I've done that with tomato plants that I've kind of pruned at the wrong time of the year and exposed a bunch of fruit and I knew it would burn if I didn't cover it. And that really does help it. Sunshine Mystic Moon said, love that industrial dustpan. Where is it from? Is it the red one? Did I use that one in there? I think I bought that um, when we first moved into this house. Yeah. And I probably just went to Home Depot. Or no, 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 now that I think about it, it, I think it was Tractor Supply. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you made that into a huge deal. Like, oh, wait, wait, well, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, because when you think one thing, but then you start to get it like a memory pops into your head. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I got that at Tractor Supply. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but man, it was so long ago, they probably don't sell the same thing. We need to get one with a long handle. Yeah, they, yeah, they make those, so right? So you can just like sweep up into your yeah. dustpan. Would you use that? Yes. Huh. Maybe it would make me sweet more. <laughs> it's like the treadmill. I'll get a treadmill because it'll make me run more. Yeah. <laughs> we have a treadmill in our basement. Do I look like I use it? No. <laughs> okay, next video is planting a butterfly garden with Benjamin. That was so fun. And I tried to bring him in for as much of the process as I thought a three-year-old could like handle because I don't want to force stuff on on him like that but it was a really fun like he seemed to be engaged with what we did we took him down to the garden center just Aaron and I and we call it dates we went on a lunch date mm -hmm. so we took him and we got him lunch and um and then we took him down and I just let him fill a box full of flowers I had already planted a bunch of things in the space just because it was a lot of work and it was 100 plus degrees um, and then he placed his plants in there and he planted one and then I lost him to the lawnmower because you came by in the lawnmower and I, I could hear it coming. I'm like, oh no, 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 I'm gonna lose him. <laughs> lawnmower loves, will win every time. He loves to ride on the lawnmower and I've yeah. been putting my um, AirPods Pro, the ones that had the noise canceling, mm -hmm. um, and he, he wants to listen to Farmer in the Dell like over and over <laughs> and over and he yells it at me over the top. He's like, Play farmer in the nail? He yells it. It's so funny. <laughs> well, when he walked by me later, he went like this. He kind of goes like that to me, and then he goes yeah. <laughs> with the AirPods. And I, I didn't know till later he was rocking out to farmer in the nail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so cute. Anyway, um, it, I think it turned out really sweet. I think the whole area is going to be this just profusion of color and fun which is like kind of opposite from the, I mean, not opposite from the rest of our garden, but it's very more, much more whimsical, don't you think? Mm -hmm, like yeah. just kind of throw stuff in there and see what happens. Um, Nicole said we could learn a lesson from this video, enjoying the now. Regardless if this flower bed moves in the future or stays right where it is, you're embracing the present. How lucky are your kids and us viewers to be a part of this? That is so sweet, Nicole, thank you. Sometimes it's hard to embrace the now when you know that, you know, I'm probably not gonna leave that right there. Uh, I'll use the, the pieces, like it's not a waste. It's never a waste. Waste, uh, especially when you can I don't know like I'm always looking to fill time with the kids doing something fun not not Samantha so much because she's not doing projects yet but like Benjamin and I did a diorama 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 how do you say that oh, I posted the a picture of it yeah the shadow box thing with mm -hmm. the like try to do stuff like that that's mm -hmm. not a screen that's something where you know we could do something together yeah, you know, I think you get a lot of a lot done because of that philosophy. Like, I think what was the name of the gal that Nicole? Nicole. Yeah, I think she's kind of right on a little bit. Um, uh, I noticed that in myself that I only want to do things once and I want to do it the right way, mm -hmm. but I miss out on a lot of opportunities because of that. Mm -hmm. I think a lot there's a lot of people like me too that hold off on projects. I'm a little bit that way though too, um, and sometimes yeah, but, I have to I have to fight against it. Yeah. Um, but apparently you're successful in fighting against it because you do tackle a lot of stuff well, even though you know it's I short term. I think about my childhood too though, just in reference to kids, because we do a lot of things, projects that are maybe just temporary that mm. don't have to do with the kids, but I remember my childhood and I remember like celebrating everything. Everything was a celebration and everything was a big deal and everything was fun 
for the most part, yeah. you know. Um, or at least you remember the fun I parts. I remember the fun, the fun bits. Which meant and, that they outweighed the Yeah, the and bad. there's a lot of times where I'm just like, I'm so exhausted because Samantha's not still not sleeping through the night. And, um, Why is that? Huh? Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ask me those questions. I can't let her fuss. I just, I have like this noise thing that I just like, can't, I can't take the noise. Anyway, um, so yeah, Benjamin didn't sleep through the, month, the night until 10 months. So yep. I know it's coming. She's almost six months old. She's got four months left. Anyway, so I have to fight against the exhaustion too and like the heat and the, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think you just have to, to fight against it and do it. Like just, yeah. Louisa said, what kind of mulch do you use? Well, in that space, I used land and sea compost, and that's not something we've done. I don't think I've actually ever mulched with it. I added it into the soil, and I think that was kind of cut maybe, or it was so sped up that, because people were asking, like, mm -hmm. did you use starter fertilizer? I did. I did um, pour... The majority of the comments were about the mulch, it seemed like. Really? Yeah. Um, I did add in biotone and land and sea before I tilled. No. I tilled. Then I added in the, the amendments and just kind of spread them out with a rake in there. Um, and then I planted everything. We did our drip system and then I um, filled over the top of the drip tube with land and sea compost. And that area was fallow. Like it sat there untouched by any kind of soil amendment for I don't know how many years. Mm -hmm. That's where the tool shed, shed sat. And then right in front of it was just like a nothing. It was like dirt with mulch on the top. Rumor has it that's where the old outhouse was. Yeah. The where property. the tool shed is but who knows that like, would have been a long time ago well if you think about it so our house the old side of the house has no bathrooms the new side was built on in the 80s mm -hmm. and that's the only place there's bathrooms so it didn't have bathrooms yeah, there had to have been a bathroom somewhere on where? the old side maybe um like where the camera room is ish like the laundry room yeah, yeah, probably. Maybe. I'll bet there was a bathroom in there. We should ask Dennis if yeah. he knows because that was that's a be. long time between like indoor plumbing and the addition. Yeah. Because if they did the addition in the 80s, I mean, think about it. There was no way that people were using outhouses in the 70s. In this, like, even 50s, 60s, 70s. I don't know. There's some real hardy people out there <laughs> who probably would do it. Uh, Mel said, How do you handle the strawberry runners? I just clip them off. Uh, Diana said, how about a little bench or a couple of little slots to sit on? Um, so there's a bench right outside that garden area. That whole area is going to change so much though. Um, just, I think in the next little bit, I mean, the Hartley is going in or the glass greenhouse rather is going in in how many days? It's the sixth today, right, Erin? Is it the sixth? It's the fifth. It is? To, to, it's the sixth. sixth. 13 days from today from today, 13 days, until Whoa, greenhouse really? installation. The electrician was there today. They're gonna come bring all their conduit stuff tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't be a functioning greenhouse space until like later because it's gonna be like, it'll be the shell of the greenhouse. I don't even know if the brick masonry men will have time to do the whole fascia. They're going to come do the cap piece at least so that the upper part of the greenhouse can be installed and then it'll they'll come finish the brick whenever they can. Um, it's been a very much so a dance of different uh, people coming in and doing their their bit. Um, right now we're trying to figure out the air conditioning heating ish, ish it's kind of an issue um, to heat and or cool a glass greenhouse in our climate is going to be a beast. We did order all of the, I'm totally getting off of, off of subject here, but we did order all the shades and stuff for inside. We are gonna plant trees that are gonna shade it because I'm not gonna use it as a production space. We will be doing some artful pruning though, so it's very much so dappled light that will come in. So it'll still receive light, but it's gotta have some protection. We can't put a glass greenhouse in an area that gets to 108 for weeks and weeks mm -hmm. on end. There's just no way we'd ever be able to use it or afford to be able to cool it. Um, so we're looking at two different ways to cool it, uh, either like a, what's that called? A mini split. Mini split, which is what we have here in the studio, but it has to be a pretty good size one to, to cool that area. Or we can have it ducted, which is a lot more uh, money yeah. wise. Yeah. And so we're trying to like just, like weigh all those different options. Anyway, we also have to have water run in that area and all that to say, we do have a bench next to the butterfly garden. 
and I got <laughs> way off. Um, and Benjamin, any, ex any excuse to talk about the Harley? <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and Benjamin does go sit on it. It's so hot though right now that he. I saw him sitting on it last night later when we were outside, and um, he goes in on those um, stepping stones and he like looks at everything, and that's really what it's for. And um, that area now that we have it done this year, we can. Uh, we can make it different every year. A lot of it's annual. So anyway, we can learn from this year how we want to make it different next year if mm -hmm. possible. Okay. The Plantastic Nerd said, did you add any fertilizer or flower tone before planting or just some compost? Both. Just answered that. David said, I had a question about planting sunflower seeds. Do you plant them point side up or down or is it on the side? However they land. I, yeah. I <laughs> just kind of want to do one of these, which is what I did over there. I need to thin them because they're like a huge forest of sunflowers. They came up in like two days. I'm not even kidding. It's so hot that, that it makes things just pop through the soil so fast. Um, Andrew said, Can, could you have turned that centerpiece pot into a fountain? Just wondering. Yes, I, that's why one of the reasons we went down to the garden center, I wanted to see if, oh, like turn the actual pot into a fountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose I could have done that. Couple of things. One, I didn't know how much effort I wanted to put into making that. Like if I couldn't find a pre-done piece, um, I didn't know how much I wanted to put into fitting a piece into that space that's temporary. Um, also our wind, like any kind of small reservoir fountain just doesn't work for us. It has to have, hold a lot of water. Otherwise you're just constantly having to fill it. But I would love to have a water. I, I think that would have been really pretty to have some water in there. Christine said, do you suggest grouping in threes when you plant beds? Yeah, you know, it depends on the size of your bed and it depends on how you're planting too. If you're planting in drifts uh, or in groups, sometimes it doesn't matter if it's odd or even because in the end they all kind of grow together and you know, they spread themselves around too. So you kind of just go with whatever fits your space. The only time I do anything even is when I'm doing a balanced space, uh, like, you know, flanking a doorway or a walkway, I make sure things are most of the time fairly balanced. But other than that, if um, I'm doing a drift, I always tend to err on doing odd numbers, but if it doesn't fit, I'll do four. Um, or I'll do, uh, I don't do two usually. I have to do things in bigger amounts in our size of flower beds. So it, you kind of just have to tailor it to your space. But I wouldn't worry too much about the number of things unless you're going for some kind of specific design. Next video was watering plants and the arrival of our glass greenhouse. And this, that video is a very true indicator, I think of uh, what a lot of our days look like right now. Like I just kind of showed you what I'm watering at the moment. And I water everything in the morning uh, that's not on drip or that needs a little bit of supplemental water. And then I have to go back through later in the day, like right after we get done filming this video, I'm going to go out and do my second round of watering, just touching things up that maybe need a little bit of extra. But the Hartley arrived um, during that time. It's a little bit like I told Aaron, like it's kind of like a wah wah <laughs> delivery. Not that, I mean, I'm super excited that it was coming, but everything is so wrapped up that you can't really see anything. Yeah, right. Um, so just in that way, like seeing it arrive and knowing that the pieces are sitting there, like I can see the little uh, turret. What, what are they called? Little finials. finials yeah. yeah not turret, little finial pieces and that's super exciting, but there wasn't really a lot to show because it's just like a bunch of bubble wrap sitting in our driveway at the moment. Lisa said, what happened with the drip system that you put in the window boxes earlier? I thought it was ingenious to paint the tubing the color of the house. Actually that tubing came the color of the house. It's a, from Proven Winners. They have cream and white tubing. Mm -hmm. I did though touch up because it says Proven Winners in teal writing, which is a little bit like I, you don't want that on your house. No, no. I kind of wish that, some, and I understand everybody wants to put their brand on everything, but it would be nice to, like, if you order something white because you want it to blend in with your white house, well, it kind of defeats the purpose when there's teal writing on it. So I took some white paint and I did touch up over that brand mm. on the, the, so I did paint it technically in some spots. It just never ran 100% proper. We ran it all the way around the house, which is way too far for a quarter inch tubing to run. And it did make it, but it just like, ugh, like the last window box yeah. was a little bit of a stretch. And I think I could have tailored plant choice to be better knowing how the drip system runs. Like I think that first year I had chocolate drop coleus in there and I let it get massive. Like I look back on that and there's sometimes I want to let things grow to their full size, size just to show you guys what they can do, but it wasn't a good look. Yeah. Like I look back at it and I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like that was way too big. I should have cut that way back because that plant had needed so much water to maintain its canopy mm -hmm. that the drip system just couldn't keep up. So I think that was partially my fault. The stuff I have in there now would probably be perfect for it. I'm loving the window boxes so much more this year than any other year. 
like the chartreuse and the pink. Yeah, I think they the really plants that are in there look really good right they now. They really show up nicely. I need to take the boxwoods out of those Versailles window boxes, though. They're, I've just battled spider mites on them for so long. I'm done. Like, I'm done with them. I think I'm going to do something different for fall. I'm just going to get rid of the whole shoot match. It's just that everything I put next to, like, the I put spruce topiary lollipops. Now mm -hmm. one of those has spider mites. Yeah. And so, I'm like, every time I put something here, even if I'm spraying these, it's, like, it's so hard to get them. And then it spreads to other things. And, ugh. Anyway. SM Elder said, where are the cats? They are, like, under shrubs, under chairs, you know, in the house in the cool like they're just kind of all over the place i don't know living their life they just don't want to be out in the no, sun no they don't come out in the sun very often helen said what's the percentage of shade in the greenhouse in this video it's a 50 percent shade cloth i actually really like it um because i feel like in, especially in this heat with full sun i don't think anything would love it in there I think we'd have to clear it out for the summer. It would be too much. But like this year, we're not keeping full sun annuals in there because they don't thrive in that 50% shade. They need the full sun, even mm -hmm. in their little cups. So we have to water them twice a day out in the full sun. But they do look a lot better than they did in there before. But right now, I've got a lot of hostas, hookahs, um, Japanese anemones, those things that can handle being in there. And they are looking pretty good. Uh, I think this year, every year, we're getting better at how to keep plants and how to keep them looking good waiting till projects happen, don't you think? I mean, there's a lot of room for improvement. Yeah, I do think we made a misstep this year in not fertilizing as much with the Proven Winners Water Soluble. Yeah, but it was a test. Yeah, it was a test. We should have done it more isolated though. Well, and the thing is, the thing that kills me is that I feel like we almost could have done it if we didn't live in this area. You know what I mean? It's like it, the test would have worked potentially if we lived somewhere where we didn't have such alkaline soil. Because I think that our alkaline water slash soil is just binding up so many nutrients that the plants can't take it up mm -hmm. and they they suffer because of that and so because of that we have to be so she precise suffers. She, she, suffers. she suffers you have to be so precise with uh -huh. what you what you give your plants in this area mm -hmm. so anyway i next year i think we'll be even better <laughs> it's always better every year is better next year i don't want to have huge projects Next year, we need to focus, next year we need to focus on like just finishing projects. Oh, like oh, let's like, just plant things and make things actually. I feel like I'm limping by so many flower beds that, like. But what if <laughs> what if our neighbor behind us says, "I've got two acres back here that I'd love to sell you. Would you be interested?" Sold. <laughs> <laughs> but we can just leave it the way it is. So we don't That's have true. to do That's anything true. new on it. Well, I don't think that you'd be happy with that though. You'd be like, "We ought to put a new water system in here." We'll dig a new well and we'll do this and that. Is that me or you talking? I think that's you talking a little bit. It might be me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Wanda said, Laura, how do you know if it's earwigs or snails eating holes in your plants? We don't have many snails here. Um, we have a huge population of earwigs. Uh, you can usually tell if you go out in the night because usually slugs, snails, and earwigs are doing their, their business. Doesn't the, the same product take care of both? It does. The bug yeah, and so slugs? Yeah, it doesn't matter. So yeah, you can bait with the same thing and it will take care of both. Both. Mm -hmm. Kate said, what is the tree in bloom by your brick patio? I think that's in reference to the golden rain tree. It's oh. in beautiful bloom right now. It's the one with the big multi trunks um, where we planted all the hostas and it's got yellow blooms that are really beautiful. We should try to get like some pictures or something of it right now. It's, it is pretty. And it's, uh, I actually don't even mind when it does its petal drop because it just drops like the whole entire flower, which are tiny and they're bright yellow and they stay bright yellow down on the ground. So it looks like a yellow brick road yeah. underneath that tree. It's really quite pretty. Madeline said, do you ever deal with leaves burning when you water plants in the middle of the day? I know you try to only water the root zone, but sometimes the hot sun scorches my plants if I water them at the wrong time. I don't notice that being a problem for me. I think everything dries up so fast. The water has no time to like sit there on anything. Yeah, I've heard that, the water being like a magnifying glass and burning things. I heard that it was a myth though. Yeah, I've heard it's a myth. I've heard it's not a myth. I just saw somebody recently post a study from somewhere claiming that it wasn't a myth. Oh. Um, like just yesterday or the day before. Really? Honestly, I don't know. For us, the reason we do it, don't do it is more because of our hard water. It creates spots, not burn spots, but mm -hmm. like calcium deposits. Yeah. Because of how hard the water is. Right. So it's not. So we don't know. Yeah, we, do, we don't know, <laughs> we but don't maybe know. just don't do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, Karen said, can we see the baby soon? You know, I post quite a number of, not a whole bunch of pictures of her on Instagram and Facebook. 
but you some. should post more on the community tab. I on should. I should YouTube. do that. Yeah. Um, the reason why, like, I don't bring her out for videos, and and Benjamin like kind of is in and out, but a little less right now because of heat. But it just, yeah. I just posted a picture of both of them on the Fourth of July, and they're so cute. It was really difficult to try to get them to both look at me. I don't think I could ever, one, be a child photographer, God bless the child phot photographers out there, um, or the type of person that has coordinated pictures all the time. Like, I oh, just yeah. cannot, like, I don't wrap my brain around any of that. I admire the people who do it. Uh, Jennifer said, love how sweet Benjamin had one sneaker and one sandal. That's more my speed right there. <laughs> <laughs> Is he starting to dress himself? Love that age. No, well, usually he's got the same one on, but he, that day he was out there with bare feet and he wanted to go in with me to the chicken coop. And I told him, you cannot come in here unless you have shoes on. So you need to go get yourself some shoes and bring them out here. So he did pick those out and he happened to bring me one of each foot. So perfect. You got shoes on. <laughs> good to go. That works. Um, and love that age. Yes, I love that age too. This age is a good age. He's hit, he hit, I don't know, every age has been a good age, but like when he hit two, like it's been so fun. He had a little, little window there right after he turned three that was a little bit difficult, mm -hmm. like a month, a little bit of a phase. Yeah, yeah, like a it really short like, amount of time. Yeah, but it's been really, like he's just such a sweet, tender, affectionate little boy. <sighs> love him. Uh, Linda said, do you do mail time anymore? Is it on another platform? We have not done a mail time in a very long time. We did one in April. We should just post it. It's edited. You thought you lost the footage for a while. And I think that's why we didn't post it. And then recently you said that you found it or something. Yeah. Like it's all still there. It or yeah, we just never put, but it was like, was it how many months ago? April. Whoa. It makes me feel horrible. It does. Yeah. To not do a mail time. It's, it's just a little bit of a quandary to, to decide whether or not we do mail times. Um, it is a good way to open things and make sure everybody knows that I appreciate it. And I, I it gives me an opportunity to say thank you in an efficient manner. Um, but I'm trying like a kind of different approach at this point. I'm trying to do like small incremental things and like do more like connecting. I like want to connect with you guys in a real way. And I feel like mail times is so, kind of flippant, like it's a, too fast. And I like to sit down and write, write notes. So I'm trying to be better about that. Anyway, I don't know what we'll do. I've been seeing that comment a lot lately though. Yeah. It's just so hard because you know, when we do it, it encourages generally more packages. Yeah. And we don't want to be seen as like asking for more gifts or anything like that. Yeah. Um, because we're not, we're but not trying to ask for more. But you also don't want to discount people's love language either. Yeah. That's the hard part because there are people who just are gift givers and that's how they say thank you and share their love and uh, you want to respect that. Mm -hmm. um, but you also don't want to seem like we're asking for that, you yeah. know? Um, it's a it's, tough it kind of a catch-22. It's very tough. Um, but if you are a person who has sent us something between like the last mail time in January and now, just know that we appreciate it so, so very much. I do have a stack of stuff like I'm looking at. Maybe on a hot day. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe that would be a good thing to do. Haley said, I just wondered what are your plans for your new English style greenhouse? Will you be keeping more exotic plants that are house, uh, that are house in the greenhouse or will you use it for growing plants from seed? Um, so I think I just mentioned that we're not going to use it as a production greenhouse. Uh, we are going to, I think, attempt to double layer our cold frame and heat that. And then we'll use the studio and the cold frame as seed starting areas because it's, it's more central to all of my stuff, you know, all the supplies that I need. It is a dirty business and it's not that pretty. I mean, look behind me, the grow lights aren't that pretty. Uh, I want the Hartley to be a pretty space. I want it to be more of an extension of our home somewhere where, you know, if I have friends over for coffee or cocktails or tea or coffee, you know, whatever. I sorry to say coffee, coffee twice. Um, <laughs> double coffee. Double coffee. If uh, that's kind of what I want to use that space for. I want to be able to have people over and, and or just the family relaxing in there and have it be a space like that. Creative Gardening said, "Did your chicken? Do your chickens ever get bumblefoot? If so, how do you treat them?" No, my chickens have never gotten bumblefoot. Knock on wood. Um, I have a couple of friends who are seasoned poultry people, and whenever I have an issue, if I have an issue, I always call on them, and they can help me. Usually, um, we had that weird something go through our chicken coop when I very first got chickens. I got ten chickens, and something went through, and 
uh, gradually killed nine of them. I have one of the original 10 still in there and I've had the four chickens I currently have in there now, I've had for a long, long time now, like a while. Several years? Not several. I think I got the, I think it's been a year mm -hmm. with the, the three black ones and then Bev I've had since the beginning. You haven't had any issues? Uh, None. It was like something wrong with that lot of chickens. It, yeah, that's possible. Oh, well, Bev, Bev's fine. So yeah. uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, because environmentally. Well, you even had some friends come out. over that have had chickens yeah. for years and years and years. Right. And none of them could they really diagnose like, what was going on. Yeah, even when like the affected ones before they had passed, I mean, they were able to come see them and see what was going on and what they were doing and nobody could figure it out. So I don't know. Um, anyway, Bethany said, is it just me or has the video resolution gone down? So we've been trying out some new cameras um, and then I like throw our old camera in there every once in a while. There's pros and cons to both. I used my old camera on this morning's video, the one um, where I did the seeds Mm -hmm. and in the arrangement in the and arrangement and when i'm holding one of the bigger problems is when i'm holding the camera and i'm talking and i kind of look look around it will focus back here and then when i turn back if my face is blurry for a long time it takes forever for it to focus back on my face but then with the other camera it i'm showing something like right here and it focus but focuses behind mm -hmm. it will never focus on what i'm showing so oftentimes i'll just get my phone out for anything close mm -hmm. um, i get my phone out and show that and it also one. has they they often have stabilization issues that camera like if you you're hard on cameras and if you ever bump it or drop it mm -hmm. it's like that ruins the stabilization and the the screen the lens gets dusty but the other one overheats in like five minutes right now right oh some cameras have overheating issues mm -hmm. it's just so hard to find a camera that is kind of bulletproof right that does everything that's like good with stabilization is has a cleanable or replaceable lens right um so that focuses properly. Thank you for bearing with us and our technical issues. It seems like we went for so long with things being pretty good, um, but we're always well, on the lookout for improvements. it's also pretty expensive though, because the that camera is like six, seven hundred dollars. It was becoming a monthly bill there for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be doing that. No. So we were looking for something alternative. Also, I think I figured out what was wrong with the audio. So that's why my mic pack thing is sitting right here because there's usually a silver piece in between where I hook in right here, like Aaron's has it, and um, this one is missing it. And so the, the actual plug-in doesn't, it's not solid. Mm -hmm. So I think when it's hooked to my pocket and the cord is like rolling around, I think that's where that scratchy, like sure. audio noise is coming from, so. Well, I can get, I can order a new lapel part for that. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. So In anyway, fact, came I'll to the bottom that right of now. that, or got to the bottom of that, <laughs> okay. Uh, next video was heat wave garden tour. Stephanie, oh, in that video, we just did a garden tour. It was a long one and we did it in the morning and it's a really tough time of year for me to want to do a garden tour, especially right now. Like I'm going to be honest. I tend to like to be one of those people that wants the house picked up when people come over, <laughs> not like spick and span spotless clean, but I want things to be fairly put together and picked up. Um, and to show, and I know that that's not what this channel is about. This channel is about gardening and our gardens are always in a constant state of, of uh, they're evolving all the time. And especially this year, ours has so much going on and we've ripped out so much and there's so many areas like right now by where the greenhouse is going, we have some of the sprinklers aren't even running anymore because we can't, we can't have them running. So that area of grass is just drying up dead you know mm -hmm. when the rest of it's fine it's hard to watch that it's really hard to to want to show that and like not want to point out all the negatives because i see those things because i'm in it every single day and i know that that can actually serve as an encouragement to those of you guys who are going through some of the same things in your yard so i just like i have to get over that and just like aaron you're you're a good one at pushing me forward mm -hmm. and I mean, like, it's not about perfection. It's just about showing the process because that's what it is for everybody. Well, one, you'll never achieve perfection. And I don't no. think anybody watches this channel for perfection either. I hope not. Because <laughs> you're not going <laughs> to get you're it here. You're not going to see it. <laughs> no. I mean, they look for beauty and stuff like that. But there's plenty of things that look good. It's just not 100%. People's gardens that you follow on any kind of social media that look really, really good, it's because they get rain all the time. <laughs> they, <laughs> they get rain all the time. They're in mild climate. They're in places where it's way easier. Aaron just asked me, like, if you move to a more mild climate, do you think you could, like, 
own at gardening. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, I think I think I could if I didn't have so many harsh things uh, kind of working against me. But I think every area has its own. You'd feel like too. you went back to being a beginner because you'd be like, I don't know how to deal with uh, Japanese beetles or yeah. um, mildew on my plants. It'd be like a whole new crop of things mm -hmm. that. But I see like a post with a beautiful with. garden and someone says, oh, we got a nice rain last night. And I'm like, oh, you did. That's really good for you. <laughs> so glad you got a nice rain. I got a 50 mile an hour dust storm. You want to trade? Anyway, top comment or uh, I think top comment uh, from Stephanie said, can I just say thank you for showing your garden before primping? I'm a newbie gardener and always feel like I'm playing catch up. I watch daily and with my own coffee to get ideas and educate myself. It makes all the difference to know that it's just how gardening is sometimes and that's okay. Oh, it's kind of perfect. <laughs> like, thank you, Stephanie, for saying that. Um, P.S. My little three-year-old requested a butterfly garden like Benjamin's. Looks like I have more work to do. <laughs> that's really nice to hear. And I do hope that it serves as an encouragement to see what gardens just like what they go through i have visions of you know this lush landscape that's full and beautiful every single season and i don't know that i will ever get it like not 100 percent in every single area i think things will just be evolving all the time and we can improve it um and we can uh i don't know yeah i feel like i was closer in our last garden because it was so small that i was able to focus so much of my attention on just little areas and it wasn't like so vast um, but it's exciting too. What we're doing really excites me. All the new spaces that we're going to be able to tackle. It's just a lot of in infrastructure and a lot of work, but it's a lot of learning too that goes along with it, which is always a good thing, I think. Stephanie, another Stephanie said, your roses aren't so nice. What do you use for black spot? I don't use anything for black spot. So don't hate me. I know. See, that's one benefit of living in our area where it's so dry. We don't deal with that here or not a lot anyway. Janice said, do you wear a hat for sun protection when you're not filming? I should. I buy hats. I have like three or four really cute gardening hats. I just, it feels so wrong. I am such a creature of habit and I just, I just don't wear them. I wore one one day this summer. I thought like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to wear hats. Well, you wore a baseball cap too. I did. One so day. Yeah, I did wear a baseball cap one day and that felt weird. Yeah. And then I wore like my bigger hat with the big red ribbon. It's really cute. You should wear a baseball hat more often. I should. Elliot said, what state does she live in? We're in Eastern Oregon, which is basically Idaho. We're right on the border of Idaho and Oregon, on the Oregon side. Lori Lori Hallelujah said, I don't understand. How is your garden doing so well when it's so hot? I'm so glad it looks that way to you. A lot of it, there are some things that are doing really well, but there's also a lot of things that are struggling. It just takes a lot of water and keeping your eye on stuff a lot. Uh, Diane said, 108 degrees and you're wearing your long sleeve black shirt and jeans. Why? <laughs> Throw on some shorts and a t-shirt and get comfortable. I trigger so many people yeah, you do. by my attire and my hair being down. Uh, again, I am a creature of habit. I don't ever want like that to become a focus. I don't know. Um, but it is. Well, it's become <laughs> one. Like it's become, it's given me the opposite effect of what I want it to be. Um, I don't know. I'm comfortable in I in long stuff. It does keep my skin for the most part protected. So does having my hair down. It can it protects my ears and my neck. I am used to it. I'm acclimated for the most part. I mean, 108 is hot, whether or not you're acclimated to it. Um, so I sweat a lot more and, and that sort of thing, but I am used to it. Um, so like, please don't let it bother you. <laughs> Sasha said, I was looking for the oh so easy Italian ice roses when you toured the path along the side of your house, but now there's lavender. What happened to the roses? I want to get some, but now I'm concerned they didn't do well. They're still there. Um, you can't see them because they've just lulled out of bloom. Um, they'll come back into bloom. I did move one, but there's still the two there. You look kind of did one of those, <laughs> like, <laughs> wait a minute, you did move one. I moved one, but it's in the same exact area. It's just down the way. The lavender was there when I planted the roses. So anyway. Uh, Mariah said, Erin, when you hear Laura talk about her plans and ideas while you're filming, how frequently are you hearing them for the first time? Mm. Do you think I've had as many lately? I feel like I've slowed down on the ideas. Yeah. Well, you know, you're, yeah. 
your ideas are more like video project ideas, like smaller. I don't feel like you have as many big ideas. I think you're kind of like big idea out. Well, I think what happens is we couldn't do a video project every day on a channel every day if we did big projects all the time. Yeah, that's true. And so to keep things going and to keep like content going too, like I think about what can I do so that we make sure they have content going on and there's always stuff to do. So I'm never at a lack for, you know, things going on out in the garden. We do tailor a lot more now than before. We tailor a lot of our videos to what's actually going on out in the space. I do mm -hmm. far less like little crafty things, which I kind of miss. And I thought, you know what? Hot days would be a really good day to do something with succulents. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, let's get back into doing some of those things that I used to enjoy doing, but they've just kind of like moved over because we have so much more going on now. Well, for ways. example, like we don't do themed, like holiday themed videos almost no, ever anymore. I don't like, I don't want to get stuck in that, like the blogger sphere where you have to like, you have to perform on holiday stuff and you have to have your stuff done a month ahead of time. And uh, yeah. is that a word blogosphere? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of online cre uh, influencers and stuff are so focused on holidays and maybe that, that'd probably help me out. Like if I like to give me ideas, like mm -hmm. if I was a little bit more focused on that. And some of it can be fun, but it can also feel like you're just stuck. Oh, here like we you, are again. Yeah. It feel like retail. Right. I felt like that when, at, down at the garden center, like, oh, we're, it's June and we're, here we are like putting our, receiving our, all of our Christmas stuff again. So you see it all, you check it all in and then, you know, you get it back out. It feels like things become a blur and you don't, it's not as special or something to me. Yeah. Or it's not as, um, it's not as, it's too contrived and planned. Mm -hmm. And I don't wanna I don't wanna become that. I want it to be fun and, and inspired if I feel inspired at the moment. And a lot of times like around smaller holidays, I just want to have a day off with my family and I don't wanna have to focus on like making sure I have content related to that every single holiday that comes along. Yeah. Um, Joseph said, Sunrise Tour is gorgeous. How is the mulberry tree doing? We got our first glimpse since the concrete removal. I don't know why I just, I haven't thought about going up there. I should just show you guys in a vlog someday. Um, but we did remove that concrete barrier. I think we showed that in a video. Oh, the tree. Yeah. It was like free the mulberry from all the soil. Um, so we removed the concrete barrier, mostly Paul. Yeah. Paul was like the mind behind that. Um, and then we remove soil. So the so it's all gone. Like all the soil and the concrete from around that trunk is gone and there's gravel right up to where like the base of it. And no roots. And no root, there was no roots in that. Like somebody literally just piled up yeah. soil around the tree. And I was certain, I was so sure. I'm like, certainly somebody wouldn't do that. Yeah. You're, you don't do that. You don't create a raised bed around an existing tree, but somebody at some point did. Um, and the fact that the previous owner, I don't think the previous owners did either. It was before them. Yeah. Um, so, and they had a drip system and everything was in there. So I just figured that somebody would have thought. Oh, we found that by the way. Do you remember when the first time we planted that up, you, there was some drip in there, yeah. but it didn't go anywhere. Right. Um, we f finally figured it out it was connected to the neighbor's water system, which maybe at one time was connected to That's one this way to property, do it. Uh -huh. but um, yeah, it was connected to their system and it was capped. Oh, okay. So it wasn't actually receiving water in no. that area until we planted it up and put water in it. But if we wanted to, we could uncap it and then yeah. run. But we have drip over there. We have our own drip, so yeah. it's not, not a big deal. Anyway, I think the tree is gonna, it's doing, it's doing well. Next video is cutting back salvia, deadheading roses, baiting for earwigs, and Virginia creeper removal. So this video was a new one we were trying out. Aaron suggested, he said, like, you have so much maintenance you want to get done out there. Why don't you just go do it and I'll, I'll come out there and film it. And then you can just explain over the top of it what you're doing. I loved it. And for the most part, I think that 99% of you liked the new format. And it's not something we'll do all the time, but we even thought maybe once a week during the heat, it would be a really good way for me to get a lot done without having to put my face in the camera every single time I'm doing something new and explaining it. Because I mean, when it's so hot, I'm just sweating in a second outside and then you get really, I get really dirty and um, you know, yeah, it was just really pleasant. Yeah. And that video, it, Took us like a couple hours maybe well i think it's also you know with two people out there even though i'm filming and not like really helping you with the project i i think it's it's huge aaron yeah it's huge. it's more like uplifting to have another person out there that and i'm usually when i'm vlogging those kind of projects i do all the camera work myself so i set up the cameras and i'm usually using a small one where i can get close-up shots and a big one that's getting a kind of a big shot 
And that's a lot of work to think through, okay, how can I make this interesting and get the project done at the same time? And then be pleasant enough, like not super dirty and super sweaty to have my face in the camera. It's people, a lot. People say they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. You can just you know, be matter. sweaty, but it does. Uh -huh, it does. Nobody it wants to look at a red sweaty face. It matters nope. in the view counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I absolutely loved it. And I think we'll probably like, I have a list. I made a list inside of things I want to get done this week. And I thought I could knock so many of these out in two hours if I don't have to set up the cameras and or talk to the camera. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, Jenny said, anyone else say all right and went out and worked in their garden. Love the new voiceover format. I'm glad it was motivating. That was the top comment? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm, I don't know. I don't know that I actually got top. I got, I grabbed questions from the last couple of videos and I always forget to get top comments. Anyway, Marge said, may I suggest a grill cover? Great video, thank you. That was a very uh, common, common. common comment and we do have a grill cover. You know where I found it? Underneath? Be behind the grill. Oh, behind All the grill. All crumpled up with a ton of stuff on it, just like leaves and dirt um, and such. Anyway, it's on there now. I'm gonna be more diligent. Rebecca said, how long did all those garden chores actually take? Um, why do your videos always make it look so quick and easy? They do make it look quick and easy and you guys know that it's not. Um, those projects probably took me two hours. Were we out there two hours filming? I think it was a little more than that, maybe three. Could have been between two and three hours for all of that, yeah. Um, your hair's if, sticking up in the back. Oh, is it? Yeah. You did I get it? No. If I would have tried to do all of that stuff myself, it would have taken all day if I was filming mm -hmm. and talking. 815 Humane said, hello, what are the pretty lavender flowers along the front border? I'm guessing in front of the chicken coop, those are the osteospermum bright lights pink. Our animal said, do you guys have a water restriction? Love your channel. No, we do not. Julie said, it's great to learn that you can cut back salvia to get them to rebloom. Do you have any advice for flop, flopping? It says flipping, but I'm guessing you meant flopping salvia. Mine are planted in good soil, but they constantly, consistently flop over. A couple of things, you wanna make sure they're in full sun. They don't get full sun. They tend to wanna be weak and flop over. Um, if they're getting way too much water, they can do that. You might need to divide them. So it's something you can dig up, divide your plant and, and spread them around your garden. Uh, yep. Burton said, will you ever do a video introducing your team? Paul, Chad, Benny. Chad and Benny don't actually like, they're not employees of ours. They're just, we hire them to do projects at our house. Um, Paul, I don't think Paul wants to be on camera so much. He is fine, like being in the background and stuff, but I want to respect the privacy and the comfort level of the people who are here. Um, so I'm always very like, every time I go down to the garden center too, you'll notice that I hardly ever show any employee. Uh, because they don't want to be on camera and I totally want to respect that. So I just, yeah, maybe at some point if they feel comfortable. I don't like being on camera either. Yeah, Erin doesn't <laughs> either. Yeah, there is a very huge vulner vulnerability that comes with it for sure. Nicole said, Laura, can you do a video about what you know about growing grapes? I know your property had some grapevines from the previous owner, but I'm wondering after you've lived with them now a few years, what have you learned about them? I don't do a single dang thing to those grapes unless they grow out into the grass. <laughs> you want to grab the person mowing the lawn. I don't trim those back like at all. And they bear amazingly well. Uh, they're a type of red grape. Um, in fact, the next question, CG said, do you harvest the grapes? If yes, how do they taste? Are they sweet? They are amazing. They're a seedless red grape. They're probably like a Canadice or a Vanessa, I'm guessing. Um, and they're, they're wonderful. We actually had though, some, a grape structure constructed near our berry beds out on the new property. We'll have to show you. I won't have grapes planted there this year. Uh, nobody has grapes at this point, but next spring I plan on putting those in and at least the infrastructure is there and waiting and ready. And at that point we'll definitely do some more like training videos and how to grow grape videos. Scotty said, your lawn always looks so lush and wonderful. What mower height do you mow at? Oh, so <clears throat> on a John Deere X350, it's at the 3.5 setting. I don't know what's, is that 3.5 inches? That's really long grass, isn't it? Well, it's really hot. It's, it's really high right now. Uh -huh. And then we go down to like three or 2.5 oh, well, in the spring and fall. Mm -hmm. So. Now, something you've learned about the Husqvarna automowers is that it, you can't accept certain <clears throat> models they, they mow too low for this yeah, time of year. Yeah, so the one that um, Husqvarna gave us originally, because they gave us one and we bought one. Mm -hmm. The one that they gave us, well, actually both of them, uh, 
but I'll just talk about the one they gave us. It's a 450X, but mm-hmm. there's a. they also have a model. It's a 450X H. And I think the H stands for height. Oh. And it mows up taller. And that's the one that we should have gotten. So then we also have a 430X that I bought for that long strip. Uh-huh. And they also have a 430X H. Oh. And so what I'm thinking is I might try to sell the, the two mowers that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there's a market. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> want to buy them? <laughs> if there's a market for that kind of thing, mm-hmm. but if if I can sell those and then buy new ones, but I'm a little turned off at this point just because of how hot it gets here, and I have it at the max setting, and I still just feel like it's cutting it too short. Mm-hmm. So you know, in a more mild climate, in a lot of other parts of the U.S., it probably would be fine. Mm-hmm. But but they also have that other model that mows higher, and I right. kind of understand. Well, they must understand too that some people. You know, when it gets 108, you don't want to be scalping your lawn. Right. It just takes too much water yeah. to keep it green. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you, you know... Like have a little canopy to shade the Yeah, if you have a little roots. canopy, you mm-hmm. can put way less water and it stays green. Mm-hmm. Katie said, was that Virginia creeper shading the tricolor beach just enough that it wasn't getting sun scorched? With it being exposed now, will the leaves burn? Yep, the leaves will burn. When I planted that tricolor beach, there was the elm tree. That was ne- nearby, like right across the driveway, right over the chicken coop, and that part of it shaded. Oh yeah, that's right. And so I thought this is perfect. It's gonna get just enough the right amount of sun to not burn, but it's shaded by the elms, so I could actually have a tricolor beach. And now it's in the full blazing sun all day long. <laughs> so anyway, it's not the best tree to have in that corner now. Unfortunately, I I don't know. I may need to move it. That's just the thing. When when you have a big tree that comes out, it just completely changes the makeup of that whole space. It does. <laughs> Anne said, latest update on the dead weed brew, please. Wondering if it's worth the investment. Yes. It yes. is. Big 100%. time. 100%. Yes. Dead weed brew is awesome. It's killing the hard ones. It's killing the bindweed. It's killing the puncture vine. It's pretty. It's all we buy now. Yeah. So... And this is coming from like, I was okay using harder stuff to get rid of the noxious weeds. And yeah, there's We've no We've tried a lot of stuff. Yeah. Caveat, you do have to mix it at the highest rate. There's, if you buy the concentrate, you can mix it at different rates. Oh, and right. And you have to, so like- It's like a 12% or something? Or? I forget what it is, because uh-huh. it's just autopilot at this point. Uh-huh. But keep that in mind. If you mix it at the lowest rate and it doesn't work for you, then you have yourself to blame. Nice, there you Aaron. go. <laughs> so nice okay last video from this week was this morning's video it was new garden stuff and seed unboxing and flower arrangement it was like so much when we were editing or in editing process i think ken said like you could have made two videos yeah (laughs) oftentimes i do that to where i try to mash so much into one video but anyway um, i had some new things from gardener supply i was excited about um they sent out hose link sent out a weeder i wanted to try which i didn't give a super fair shake to Aaron (laughs) told me anyway i'll talk about that in a minute um i got a box of seeds I had ordered from Johnny's and I thought it'd be fun to go through that and then the day before I had harvested a bunch of flowers never made it to actually arranging them so I decided to arrange them in that video (laughs) it's like such a random assortment of things hope you guys don't mind those I mean they're just like this is what I'm doing today so here you go uh Jill said I don't envy your temperatures no (laughs) no (laughs) no They're horrible. Um, how are the college gardens and planters doing? They are doing great. We need to go down there. Yeah. Like I am impressed with how they're doing because initially I think there was a little bit of a, um, we had some issues right in the very beginning. Well, it just, it got so hot so quick. Yeah. Um, and they weren't quite prepared with the water we situation. We planted on a Friday, which was probably not great of us to do. Yeah. We shouldn't have. We should have done it. But you know what? They've got people to water all weekend anyway. So but I don't know if they had them set up to do that. Did they? I don't, you know, I don't know, but they, but everything's those are looking good. <laughs> However, um, the splash pad containers, it, I took Benjamin there yesterday, um, to actually play the splash pad. Them. No, I, a couple of them are super crispy and I, I kind of bumped them, you know, cause they're self watering and there was zero water in them. So we won't be able to update those because. But the church pots and the college pots look awesome. Yeah. Planting's got, so we'll, maybe we'll go do a field trip. Yeah. One of these mornings. Um, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, don't know how to pronounce your name, I'm sorry. Said, I love your channel. You always give me such wonderful ideas. Do you rinse your flowers off before putting them in a vase or spray them with anything for bugs? No, in fact, um, the flower arrangement, I took pictures of it inside once I got it in there. And then I posted them this morning because I forgot to put them at the end of the video, of course. There's always something I forget. And somebody pointed out that on the yarrow, there was a bee. And that arrangement was in my house. 
when that bee was on the flower. Just bringing the bugs in. Yeah. Uh, we don't have terrible bug problems like on our flowers typically. Like I don't know, like I hope that they don't come that doesn't haunt me later. What kind of bugs would be a problem? Well, I don't know, like aphids or little black oh. black flies or beetles or well, spiders. Well, a lot of our annuals we spray with Captain Jacks on a I don't fairly... I haven't sprayed a single thing out in the cut flower garden. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, those, I don't notice. Right now we have such an elm seed beetle problem. It's like this plague that, that uh, strikes every single summer and everybody has them. They're these little bugs that are completely benign. They don't bite, they don't, they don't do anything. They feed off of the little elm seeds off of our trash elm trees that scatter through our valley. Um, so like we have tons of food for them to eat and they get in everywhere. Like they get into picture frames, like under the glass and they get into, they get into everything. In fact, I have a Keurig that I make my coffee in and I check the reservoir every single time before I make a cup because oftentimes I'll find them floating in the water. It's so gross. Anyway, so right now we're dealing with such an issue of those. I wouldn't notice a couple more bugs. Yeah. As long as they're not earwigs. If we had an earwig plague, I would probably be a little upset with that. Those are gross. Yeah, those are really gross. Kayla said, oh no, I'm getting the itch to stock up my seeds for next year now. What are the top five or ten flowers or fillers you would recommend growing for someone with a smaller garden? That's um, a good video idea. Yeah, that is a great one. Don't say anything. Don't say it. We'll make a video out of it. Okay. Video coming soon. That's perfect to do on a hot day. Yeah. Boom. Thanks, Kayla. Uh, Renee said, is the bunny tail grass grown from cedar bulbs? Uh, I started that from seed uh, and it was very sad when I planted it out in the cut flower garden and it is gorgeous now. There's so many things like the mahogany splendor hibiscus and the bunny tails that I think, you know, I need to grow this not just for a cut flower garden situation. I need to grow this just to supplement my own flower beds. Like, why am I not planting these in our flower beds? I'll get there one day. Katie said, is Johnny's the best place for price and amount of seeds you get in a packet? Yeah, I would say that my parents' garden center, Andrew Seed, which they have a website too, andrewseed.com and Johnny's are the very best for price. Uh, you get so many seeds and oftentimes you'll see the same varieties on other people's websites and you get so like far less seeds for more money. Um, so I've been really happy with the value. Anyway, I think we can link both of those places down below. Uh, Amy said, I have a, a few varieties of yarrow in my garden, but they get large and floppy. What would you, your advice on growing yarrow? What would be your advice on growing yarrow well? Poor soil. It likes it on the dry side. Don't ever fertilize it. Give it full sun. Those are the things it wants. And the last comment, uh, I have spider mites on my rosemary. Any tips? We did a full spider mite video. Was that la I think it was last year. Mm -hmm. We will link that down below because it can go, it will go into way more detail than I could go into right now. Anyway, that is it for today's recap video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful to hear some of these uh, answers. And you know what? I don't know what the next few weeks are gonna look like, just depending on heat, but I mean, I kind of anticipate videos just coming out normally. Um, Aaron's kind of been pushing to go yeah, down Yeah, I've been to pushing to do to five videos on the main channel per week, plus the recap video on the highlights channel, so total of six. I feel like for just, you know, going forward and not getting burned out, not that we really are feeling that, but every once oh. in a while it just feels like a, just a little bit of a push, like it's a little difficult to get six out in a, a week. I feel like five would be more just like long-term easier to handle. And I'm bucking against it. Yeah. A little bit. And you know what? If we do six, that's fine. But I just don't want us to, to burn out because I feel like mm -hmm. we've got a good thing going. And yeah. It, it's fun for us. I don't want it to ever not become fun because yeah. I watch other YouTubers well, who, who do get burned out and I feel like you just need to set things in place ahead of time so that you don't, you don't go from six videos a week or to, seven with the recap video to zero. Sure. You know? I think though as long as you're cognizant of that and you're constantly thinking and evaluating your time and evaluating your life and mm -hmm. all that sort of thing, um, I think if you are thinking about it and you could you could put a stop to it. You know, you could start reducing if you need to. I don't feel the need to at this point. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I'm finally, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I'm not pregnant and I don't have like, I, cause last year, I don't know, after a year that I've been pregnant during a gardening yeah. season, like, oh, I can actually lift stuff. I can be out here in the heat and it doesn't, I mean, it does matter. <laughs> you wanna yeah. be careful in the heat, but I don't have to be as careful. And I don't know, I always feel like the drive to, to do I don't know sure well and that's good too yeah you know whatever okay. happens happens I'm, I, I mean I'm I'm good but I think I think five <laughs> a week 
plus the recap Maybe video. when it's hot out. So if we decide to skip a day, because we do receive a lot of messages if we decide to skip a day, um, wondering if we're okay and all that yeah. business. If we decide to skip, I will put it in the YouTube community. I usually try to post there like, oh, we skipped today. Like this weekend, we skipped Monday because it was a holiday weekend. And uh, honestly, we just didn't have anything ready to go up that day because it was a holiday weekend and we didn't have as much help and stuff, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. Anyway, could have probably had this discussion off camera. <laughs> uh, but you know, I don't know, you guys would know anyway, eventually. Yeah. Whatever we decide. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.